please tell me how we are at episode three. <laughs> Already, guys, if you are like me and you're using these videos as accountability, please, please know that as much as it terrifies you guys seeing these getting released and being like, oh gosh, that's three out of 13, only, like, only 10 to go, please know that every time I pick up the camera, I feel exactly the same. I said at the beginning, I said it in the last video, the accountability of these videos is literally gonna be the best bit. If you are new here then welcome, if you're not welcome back. My name is Rachel and I'm the founder of one of the UK's fastest scaling accountancy practices and I am building this series for you to binge watch if you want to or watch it live every single four weeks I am releasing brand new videos and I want you guys to set a huge audacious uncomfortable juicy goal for yourself over the next 12 months i'm going to be popping up with notifications for you every single four weeks so to make sure you get a notification you need to subscribe to the channel and turn the little bell on so you get a notification every single time i release a video every single time i want you to sit down and give me an update give me an update in the comment section let me know what your goal is and let me know how close to it you are my goal is to implement a brand new shiny piece of software into my business and that might not sound like a 12 month goal but let me tell you <laughs> this is part of something so much bigger this is part of me as a female business owner trying to step back from my business to just give me the headspace and the clarity to not only continue scaling the practice um, and sort of really trying to get myself out of the day-to-day -day running of the business but also to get me one step closer to feeling like we could maybe have a family one day. James and I got married last year and so I'm just trying to create the content that for me right now I desperately need and so I want to bring you along on the journey with me over the next 12 months as I try to remove myself from the day-to-day -day running of the practice by implementing Go Proposal. I have hired a full-time business development manager to come and support me on this journey and so I am so excited to bring you guys behind the scenes. Today we are talking about pricing. <laughs> the dreaded, dreaded pricing. If you're a client, maybe don't watch this bit, but we're going to talk about pricing. Um, before I get stuck into the video, it is going to be a brand new month when we're watching this, and so I actually just wanted to give you guys a debrief of the month in numbers. I have promised you transparency at every single touch point, and so let's just do a deep dive. If you want to catch up on where I started, how many clients I had, what the turnover was, you can check it out here. So if you want an ongoing deep dive into the numbers, at the end of every single month, I post deep dives on Instagram. So get followed. I will see you over on Instagram for a fixed update every single month on client count, how many clients we took on, how many clients we lost, what the churn rate is, all of the juicy information that if I was starting a practice right now or if I was starting a business right now, exactly what I would need to know. But today we're talking about pricing. Uh, this is going to be part of an ongoing vlog and so I just wanted to kick this off now. But I'll see you in a sec when I'm probably a bit stressed at my desk trying to deal with the overwhelming task that is working out our pricing. So, let's go. Okay, guys, I am at my desk. We have literally just done the sign off on Go Proposal pricing. For the last like two and a half, three weeks, we have been tweaking our pricing from the clunky spreadsheet that we used to use into the Go Proposal system, which is consistently pricing and I could not be happier about it. And so as we've been going through this experience, we had a first iteration of what, what we thought the pricing would look like. We then stress tested it and it changed. Um, and just a couple of tweaks here and there. So we've actually been running our current quoting system alongside Go Proposal and stress testing as we go and just keeping track of if when we're pricing in Go Proposal, like what are the variances? Are they positive? Are they negative? Like where are those variances coming from? And literally nearly every time, if ever there was a difference, it was actually Go Proposal flagging that we should be charging more. And so as we've gone through the process over the last couple of weeks, I have made some notes and I'm basically just going to run you through how I found the experience of getting to the point of pricing consistently in Go Proposal, what I, what the differences are between what we do now and what we what we're going to be doing using Go Proposal, what I wish we knew before we started and 
all of the good bits and bad bits and everything in between of using the GoPros system. So put the kettle on if you want a real life case study of what it has been like implementing GoPros into the practice. This is, we're getting into the juicy bit of this 12 month series now. So on a whole, this experience of moving the pricing over has been a really, really interesting one. And it really like forced me to sit down and consider what is gonna be the most effective way of pricing and like understanding different services and different like isms that as accountants and through speaking to loads of clients we get to pick up along the way and like to also understand like where there should be variances in pricing and what we should be basing those variances on has been super interesting because the alternative which is the model that we have been using which is this sort of spreadsheet pricing mechanism was never built with like a let's zoom out and look at pricing it was just done as we were going and so that headspace and clarity has been super interesting i would also say i found it a surprisingly rewarding experience of going through to like watch every single configured line item like really come to life within the proposal and for it all to actually like work together in terms of all of the variances and calculations that we do in the background like it's been so rewarding seeing that come together i would definitely say as well like as an experience as a whole at the beginning i found it a little bit tricky to sort of work out like what is the best way to do something so because we've not had that finite detail and clarity over like multiples and ratios and what variances should be driven into calculations it felt a little bit like fiddly at times but i would say it only felt fiddly at the beginning and once we got into a rhythm it actually was really really rewarding and again i would say like you generally only gonna have to set up go proposal once so i would say that like we plan to use go proposal for years to come and so that short term bit of it feeling a bit fiddly actually you just it has to feel fiddly once and then every single person who uses the system afterwards is never going to feel like that and so that's definitely a huge win and so i just like to run through the major differences between using go proposal and like using what we do now so at, as of right now we actually don't have to know the number of transactions or line items in order to be able to quote for a current software obviously doing that means that we're actually less informed but there's no rule like there's not a rule that we can't quote without it we'll just have to explicitly tell the client that it's based on an estimation whereas in go proposal we actually will not be able to quote without knowing this information which has given us huge like food for thought when we're thinking about like communications that we're sending to clients before the quoting meeting just making sure they've got all of that information ready so that's been really really good the next thing that i wrote down was that we don't actually discuss pricing to a great extent actually on the calls like we will have like a fact finding session we'll then go away and then send a proposal and so we're actually very excited and a bit nervous about changing this because when we start to use go proposal we're actually going to be running through all of the pricing details ourselves and going through every single service line item with the client in real time so really excited about that okay i made a list and this is me and annabella by the way so like annabella who's business development we've been working on this together so some of this is me and some of this is her um what we wish we knew before if we were doing this again it would probably have been really helpful to like block out a chunk of time and actually sit and brainstorm so like work through every single line item and just absolutely nail the pricing so i feel like we didn't do that because that felt time consuming but actually it would have meant that everybody was clarity and we had that agreement from the word go but instead it's been a bit of like trial and error and we've had to be reviewing the numbers it has worked out well on a whole in terms of the sense of being able to like stress test the numbers and really compare it to the fees that our current proposal software is generating and then see what doesn't look right and doesn't look doesn't feel right but if we were going to do it again we would just like block out time to do it all in one go rather than like doing it bit by bit and i would also say like it's been the accountability of these videos that have made me just sit and get it done so thank you to you guys what else we wish we knew before would be that the process of setting up the line items is actually really easy but initially deciding on the pricing type so like whether to use a fixed price a variable price or a complexity price was a bit tricky and the information on go proposals website was so helpful so like what i wish i knew before is just like use the go proposal resources there's like such a huge amount of resources whether that is like separate web pages or they have a little blue question mark on the screen when you're editing a line item the only other tip i'd be able to give is just use go proposals resources because they they have gone through this process before they've gone through it with hundreds of accountants before and so that is always going to be the best way to do it first that we end on the good bits because there are so many more good bits than bad bits and then the bad bits aren't even bad bits so 
bad bits or like traumatic events that have happened through the process of setting this up. Bad bit slash word of warning. Do not click off a line item without hitting save, otherwise you will lose the work. This is the face of someone who learned that the hard way, so do not click off a line item until you've hit save, otherwise you will lose everything, including your sanity. Two other bits. So the first one is that you can't currently select for pricing type to be quarterly. So like if you do a VAT return, you can't select for it to be quarterly. There's the option of one-off or monthly. So this means that on the proposal, you can't really see what the prices, prices will be charged on a quarterly basis, which is in line with how we bill. But again, very aware that lots of other accountants just bill monthly, and so that's absolutely fine. So we have instead included the annual price and then just said that this is a quarterly figure that will be billed quarterly. And then the only other thing, and this was, we were scraping the barrel of like bad bits or things to know beforehand, would be that the proposal doesn't show the total fee of monthly services. You can only see the monthly total on a per month basis if that makes sense. But this is really helpful because it shows clients and helps clients to understand actually how they will be billed each month, which was super, super helpful. Okay, and I have a huge list of good bits because I've got to say, like, we were skeptical. We have used our current pricing system for a really long time and we, we were skeptics. But the good bits are First one, without a doubt, and this was the reason that we wanted to move to go proposal in the first place, is that the, it is scientific. So when we pull a proposal together for a client using go proposal, we literally know that the total fee is based on the complexity of the work, how long it's going to take, the client's revenue, the volume of transactions, all of those things, and it just allows you to feel so much more confident in not only pricing but also explaining to the client why the price is what it is because we know it's based on rules rather than any form of like subjectivity and I just if you're someone who's starting an accountancy practice and there is an element of like doubt in your mind or you don't feel confident on pricing I feel like Go Proposal is going to be the solution for you because at the beginning as well as all of the complexities that we have now you also have imposter syndrome and I was talking to another accountant about this yesterday the only people who ever tell us we're too expensive are clients and generally the only feedback we ever get on proposals and pricing is that we're too expensive like very rarely would someone reply to a proposal be like just want to let you know I've had quotes of double that elsewhere like nobody ever says that the only feedback we get on pricing is negative and so having that like being able to use go proposal as a tool to decrease your imposter syndrome and increase your confidence chef's kiss good bits are there are so many different options for like how different fees work for different services which again as accountants just amazing because of the complexity with every single job so like you can set fees to vary by like changes in annual revenue changes in complexity or like a number of variations so like number of employees or number of line items and you can also add in calculations so you can multiply the basic fee by the number of employees number of months and then every single line item can have a completely different pricing type so i feel like if you're an accountant listening to this you will know that this is the nerdiest of nerd things but like just 10 out of 10 so it just allows for like so much flexibility for pricing across all of the different services that you offer but you know that even though it's different for each service that service is absolutely nailed and i just can't even tell you how much more confident we feel even already using a matrix rather than like a I think that's right again super useful to be able to split out the line items into different sections for example we have been able to split out line items into like monthly services quarterly business development work one-off work which means that we can actually walk through this in a chronological order with the client on the call so like here's what we're going to do monthly here's what we're going to do annually and it's also an opportunity for clients to be able to see other areas of the business that they might be interested in. They might not even otherwise know that that's the service that we offer. So again, huge opportunity to upsell. And then the color coding for the status of each line item is so helpful. So when you're getting everything set up, it shows if you haven't included a price or a description in that line item or if a label is missing, which is super, super helpful to monitor the progress. I feel like that was the biggest word vomit ever. But I feel like that content is the content that I wish I'd watched before I set it up. And I cannot even tell you, like, if you put a picture of me now compared to a picture of me or a picture of that video where I was talking about this at the beginning, where I was literally sat crying in my car. I feel like we look different because quoting and onboarding clients has just been absolutely game changing. Um, an industry report was released yesterday and we every single year mine and james's favorite thing to do is to compare our growth with the industry report that gets released so this industry report told us 
that over the last 12 months, average firms of our size took on 27 clients. And in the last 12 months, we took on 384. <laughs> and so I can't even tell you, like that is 384 people who without the system, I would have been like, ah, I hope they're being priced right. And as someone who is just like so excited of the opportunities that it brings to my team and my clients of us stepping back out of the day to day, all of those opportunities that that brings, it actually just mitigates all of the stress that comes with that too. And so, as you guys know, this video is part of a 12 month series where I get to bring you guys behind the scenes of my huge business goal and you guys get to give me your accountability updates too. So please let me know in the comments how you're getting on with your accountability. Literally having to sit down and make these videos is keeping me so accountable and it literally meant that I like got my head down and did this work faster than I would have before because I can't procrastinate because I have you guys keeping me accountable. As with every single part of this series, this video is very, very kindly sponsored by Go Proposal. As you can see, I am a walking, talking ambassador for Go Proposal. I can already see and feel how this is going to impact our clients. And so the next step is actually to work out what the proposal looks like, gets all the graphics sorted. We're going to figure out if we're going to be using the letter of engagement side of Go Proposal as well, which is super exciting. And yeah, I think next up is going to be actually testing testing the pricing method on some clients. So I'm so excited to keep you guys updated. Thank you again to Go Proposal for sponsoring today's video and I hope to see you again very soon.